Captain Picard Day? Oh, uh, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's for the children. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm a role model. <laughs> I'm sure you are. The uncertainty, self-discovery, the unknown. These are many of the qualities that make life worth living. Well, at least to me. It is possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. That is not a weakness. That is life. I trust you, Sochi. I know you. I believe in you. The only person you're truly competing against, Wesley, is yourself. I wouldn't want to live my life knowing that my future was written, that my boundaries had been already set. The intelligence that was formed on the Enterprise didn't just come out of the ship's systems. It came from us from our mission records, personal logs, holiday programs, our fantasies. Now, if our experiences with the Enterprise have been honorable, can't we trust that the sum of those experiences will be the same? You have to measure your successes and your failures within, not by anything that I or anyone else might think. The challenge, Mr. Offenhaus, is to improve yourself, to enrich yourself. Get up. You must not kneel to me. You do not wish it? I do not deserve it. A person's life, their future, hinges on each of a thousand choices. Living is making choices. Seize the time, Maribor. Live now. Make now always the most precious time. Now will never come again. Someone once told me that time was a predator that stalked us all our lives. But I rather believe that time is a companion who goes with us on the journey, reminds us to cherish every moment, because it'll never come again. The past is written, but the future is left for us to write. And we have powerful tools, Rios. Openness, optimism, and the spirit of curiosity all they have is secrecy and fear and fear is the great destroyer real if the romulans see us decloaking they'll, they'll know the truth to... admiral which is what everyone will know very shortly the first duty of every starfleet officer is to the truth whether it's scientific truth or historical truth or personal truth but when the moment came to make a decision you made the right one you chose to tell the truth and face the consequences as long as you can still do that, then you deserve to wear that uniform. I don't think that's a little harsh. I think that's the truth. But that's a truth that we have obscured behind a comfortable, easy euphemism. I've talked with him. We are hunting an innocent man. There are times, sir, when men of good conscience cannot blindly follow orders. The claim I was only following orders has been used to justify too many tragedies in our history. Starfleet doesn't want officers who will blindly follow orders without analyzing the situation. But nevertheless, I have disregarded that directive on more than one occasion because I thought it was the right thing to do. Your actions were appropriate for the circumstances. And I have noted that in your record. I don't deny that it may be necessary to fire on it, but I look on that as a last resort. So long as we are in no danger, I will make every effort to communicate. Pursuant to paragraph 1290, I hereby formally request third-party arbitration of our dispute. Seems there was no profit in it. In revenge, there never is. Let the dead rest. And the past remain the past. What we leave behind is not as important as how we've lived. After all, number one, we're only mortal. I think when one has been angry for a very long time, one gets used to it, then it becomes comfortable like, like old leather. And finally, 
become so familiar that one can't ever remember feeling any other way. Let us not condemn Simon Tarsis or anyone else because of their bloodlines or investigate others for their innocent associations. He is different, yes. But that does not make him expendable or any less significant. You cannot explain away a wantonly immoral act because you think that it is connected to some higher purpose. Except that it's illegal. It's in violation of an agreement that the Federation signed in good faith. How many people does it take, Admiral, before it becomes wrong? Hmm? A thousand? Fifty thousand? A million? How many people does it take, Admiral? Are you prepared to condemn him and all who come after him to servitude and slavery? With the first link, the chain is forged. The first speech censured, the first thought forbidden, the first freedom denied, chains us all irrevocably. No being is so important that he can usurp the rights of another. But she, or someone like her, will always be with us, waiting for the right climate in which to flourish. Spreading fear in the name of righteousness. But fear is an incompetent teacher. Yes, they have life, but no one is teaching them what it's for. To be alive is a responsibility as well as a right. Doctor, the sperm whale on Earth devours millions of cuttlefish as it roams the oceans. It is not evil, it is feeding. The same may be true of the entity. What you're doing here is unethical. It's immoral. I'll fight it. Admiral, I am more concerned with protecting the honor and integrity of Starfleet. Starfleet was founded to seek out new life. Well, there it sits. Waiting. Order a man to hand this child over to the state. Not while I'm his captain. And you told the truth up to a point. But a lie of omission is still a lie. That may be impossible, sir. Things are only impossible until they're not. Yes, sir. There is a way out of every box, a solution to every puzzle. It's just a matter of finding it. And please add that if he is unable to provide us with a ship, then I am sure there are others in the Klingon Empire who would be willing to help me. And then they would have our gratitude. Unfortunately, they are currently in their hibernation cycle. However, they will awaken in six months, at which time we can get this matter settled. Now, do you want to wait? Or give me my three weeks? Mr. Worf, will you extend the appreciation of the Federation and my personal gratitude to the Klingons? Don't you think that Jay here would make an excellent science officer? What do you say, Jay? Will you join our crew? It's Jay Gordon. Of course. Forgive me, Jay Gordon. I accept. <laughs> Sometimes, you just have to bow to the absurd. He just kept talking in one long, incredibly unbroken sentence, moving from topic to topic so that no one had a chance to interrupt. It was really quite hypnotic. <laughs> then I shall appoint you my executive officer in charge of radishes. There. Patterson, do you know that one? Good. Goes like this. Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. Sonny la matina, Sonny la matina. Ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. Very good. Now, keep singing. A British tar is a soaring soul, as free as a mountain bird. His energetic fist should be ready to resist a dictatorial word. Sing, Wolf, sing. I find it hard to believe that you're that good a singer. Singer? Oh, you'll be interested to know that I've arranged for a Commander Riker Day next month. I'm even considering making an entry myself. Great.